Let's continue the story of <coughs> ridiculously huge numbers by focusing on <coughs> these two ingredients, and then we're going to see another very important ingredient come in. Um, so far, we've been looking at things that have two or three inputs, uh, like this kind of thing. We have the base, essentially, how many up arrows, and then the, the other argument here. And that's a little complicated to have those three inputs. And so what we want to do is strip it down a little bit <coughs> and start over again with successorship. Just use the idea of recursion and um, see what that gets us. So with, this is called the fast-growing hierarchy. Another thing you can look up on Wikipedia if you want. And here's how it's defined. It's defined in a very simple way. F sub or I'm going to give you the first part of the definition. <coughs> um, there's sort of two, three elements. F0, so it's going to be uh, a bunch of functions, and a hierarchy of functions, and this is going to tell us which function we're doing, and then it just takes a, an integer input. F0 of n is just n plus 1. It's just the successor. So we start out with the absolute root basic arithmetic operation successorship. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. Okay. Then f sub, let's say, let's use alpha plus 1 of n. What we do is we do recursion. We do repetition of this function. We um, use the f alpha function, and we repeat it n times. So this is going to be f alpha. And then the way you write that is just a superscript n. <coughs> and then we need a, an input to put into it. And for lack of a better input to have, let's just put in n into it as well. So n is going to going in in two places, which is going to happen again in an even more powerful way in, in a little bit. Um, so it's going in as the input, and it's also going in for how many times it's repeated. So remember, when I put the superscript there, it's just repeat the f alpha function. That previous function in the chain n times. So I put a chain of, a uh, sequence of n f alphas. So I put that number n into f alpha, and then I do it again and again and again, and I do that n times. So that's going to be n times. Okay. So s that's not the entire definition, but that gets us actually quite a long way. So let's see what that gives us. Um, f0 is the successor function. Let's see what f sub 1 of n is supposed to be. Okay, that means repeat the successor function n times on n. So I start with n, <coughs> excuse me, and then I do successor n times. Oh, that's just the definition of adding n. So it's just n plus n, which is 2n. So this is a doubling. Okay, that's a very natural operation. So f1 is the doubling function. f2 of n is going to be f1 repeated n times applied to n. OK, so that's going to be, now remember this is doubling, so it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times n times, and then applied to n. So OK, that's 2 to the n times n. So roughly, it's exponentiation its sort of exponential strength. All righty. Now what about f3? <coughs> f3 of n, well, what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to do this process of start to take a number and take 2 to that number and multiply them, but I'm supposed to do it repeatedly. So this is where it gets a little tricky. It's f2 of f2 of dot 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 of f2 of n, and then n times. OK. So <coughs> let's see. Let's look at a, at a low number example first. f3 of 2, let's say. That's going to be f sub 2 of, we just do, do it twice. So we do the previous operation in the hierarchy twice, and we do it 
with the input of 2. Okay, so that's f2 of, now f2 of 2 is 2 to the 2 times 2. 2 to the 2 times 2. I think it's a little dot. Okay, now that's just 8, <clears throat> but I want to actually see the pattern, so I'm going to leave it that way. Okay, now f2 of something, remember, is 2 to that number times that number. Ooh, okay, 2 to the, oops, 2 to the 2 times 2, and then all times what I put in, 2 to the 2 times 2. Okay, well, roughly, it's certainly bigger than 2 to the 2 to the 2, and not by, well, it's substantially bigger, but the key is really that we're starting to get repeated exponentiation, okay? And so we're getting iterated or repeated exponents. Okay, let's do one more example of f, f3. f3 of 3 would be f2 of f2 of f2 of 3. Okay, so that's f2 of f2 of 2 to the 3 times 3. Okay, and then the, so that is f2 of, I still haven't, I'll keep that in reserve. And then I take 2 to what I see in the parentheses, 2 to the 3 times 3. And then times 2 to the 3 times 3. Okay, Ooh, I guess I could put another dot in there to make it clear. Okay, and then I'm going to do it again. Oops, try to control C there. Okay, so I'm going to take that now. Oh, let's just delete the F2 part. So I just take 2 to this whole thing. Let's actually just cut that out. 2 to the bam, and then just times itself. This is where cut and paste is really cool because you can actually do these things kind of automatically with cut and copy and paste. And so again, it's copy and paste is a kind of a recursion technique. So we're basically getting this sort of iterated tower of twos with a three on top. And we've got some extra stuff, but we know that this kind of thing right here, this iterated tower is what's going to dominate the size of this thing. So at, at any rate, we can say it's greater than, um, and we could <coughs> go ahead and say that's two, and that's a double up arrow. Um, and then how many are there? There's actually four of them. But just to be safe, let's just say it's really bigger than two up arrow, double up arrow three. Okay. And so in fact, what it turns out is that f sub alpha of n is greater than two and then it's not alpha of those, it's alpha minus 1 up arrows n. So we can see that here that we're getting these iterated exponentials. And this is a pretty substantial underestimate. Um, it's really a, a fair bit bigger. I don't think it's bigger than 2 and then alpha up arrows n. But uh, I sat, sat down and tried to prove it, and I'm not sure how easy it is to prove that. Because you've got all this extra stuff, and it's not clear how much that contributes. But this is roughly, a very rough, um, roughly giving the order of growth. Okay. So what we've discovered is that once this number becomes anything decent, like 3 or above, for any fixed alpha, we've got a function of n that grows really, really quickly. Because we know that if we put a 2 and then a bunch of up arrows and then let that be the variable, that's a very, very fast growing function. It's way faster than an exponential or a doubling or, or adding the success or all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But so far, we've just basically matched, we can match any um, up arrow. Okay, we just, the claim is that if I want to match, like, if I say I have the, the function, let's say 10 up arrow, uh, 12 up arrows n. That's a very, very fast growing function of n. Can I match it with this hierarchy? Yeah, I can do that. Um, let's take f sub, well, if I did 13, 
of n. Is that bigger? Well, this is a 10 instead of a 2. But I'm pretty darn sure that if I just matched with, made it a 14, it would be much, much, much bigger than this incredibly fast-growing function of n. But can I match the horizontal arrows? Or these ridiculous things like horizontal arrows decorated with huge numbers, or horizontal arrows decorated with decorated, decorated, decorated. decorated. Can, we get, can I do that? Okay. And that's what's going to need another very, very key idea, something that shows up all over the foundation of the mathematics, and that'll be the next video.